So Politico.com has a scoop tonight that's a little bit alarming. So I, I feel a little alarmed by it from a just a, a national security perspective. I don't see this as a White House, Washington drama story. I see this as a national security story. Uh, it's about John Kelly, recently retired four-star general. Until last year, he ran Southern Command for the U.S. military. Uh, on January 20th, he was sworn in as the Secretary of Homeland Security. He served as Secretary of Homeland Security until July 28th of this year. July 28th, he left Homeland Security to replace the fired White House Chief of Staff. Well, now Politico.com reports tonight that according to three U.S. government officials, quote, Chief of Staff John Kelly's personal cell phone was compromised potentially as long ago as December. Apparently, the chief of staff had noticed that his phone wasn't working properly, so he did what you do when you work in an organization. He called IT and asked them to fix his busted phone for him. Handed over his phone. The tech support people were trying to figure out what was wrong with his phone, and they realized, oh, the phone that belongs to the White House chief of staff has been externally breached. Uh, according to Politico's reporting, quote, Kelly turned his phone into the White House tech support this summer, complaining it wasn't working or updating software properly. Kelly told the staffers the phone hadn't been working properly for months. That's when they discovered that it had been compromised. Now, one security expert talking to Politico tonight describes the worst case scenario for this. It's not just that somebody might have been able to access the data on his phone. Um, they may conceivably have been able to turn on the phone's microphone or camera, thereby, you know, tagging along wherever it was that John Kelly held that phone. And given that he was running the Homeland Security Department and then running the White House over that time period when his phone was compromised, this news does sort of send a chill down my spine in terms of American national security. Now, the White House has known about this for a while. According to Politico.com, a one-page memo last month summarizing the incident circulated throughout the administration. Uh, and apparently, John Kelly now has a new phone. Oh, good. But it's one thing to worry about the national security you know, instincts of this administration, their capacity for dealing with complex and dangerous international situations. It's one thing to think about their national security decisions and their, their history of having even very senior national security personnel compromised by foreign governments and nevertheless operating at a very high level inside the White House. But it is quite another thing to hear that the compromise might be of this nature, might be a technological compromise, uh, and it might have been going on until very recently, and it might have wormed its way into the inner echelons of the White House in a way that even this White House wasn't, avail wasn't aware of and couldn't control at the time. So there's been um, some reporting recently about White House staff being briefed on the importance of security issues about their personal devices and their personal email. Uh, but we can report tonight on some new guidance that has apparently gone out to Secret Service personnel involved in um, White House protection. Now, I should tell you the White House is not confirming anything about this memo to us tonight, uh, and neither is the Secret Service. When we contacted the Secret Service for information about this, they just redirected our query to the White House. But according to a document that we have reviewed, Secret Service personnel were notified last week that as of this week, as of Monday, there is a, quote, new restrictive policy that is going into effect related to the West, related to the West Wing that will, quote, prohibit the use of all personal mobile devices, cell phones, tablets, smartwatches, etc., within the entire West Wing. Oh, all personal devices will either be secured in provided lockboxes or turned off completely prior to entering the West Wing. There will be a 30-day management period before this policy is fully enforced by the administration. The policy's governance only applies to personal devices within the West Wing. Again, this is according to a document that we have reviewed exclusively that says this policy is in effect as of this week, as of Monday, at the White House. Secret Service personnel have been notified about this change, but they've also been told, according to the same document, that, quote, beginning this Friday, October 6th, this policy will be in effect for West Wing tours as well. And it will include all pass holders and their guests. Pass holders and their guests will be required to secure or completely turn off their personal devices prior to entering the West Wing. Now, 
This is the kind of policy that has long been in effect for, for SCIFs, right, and for other secured meeting spaces uh, in the White House and in other parts of the executive branch. But apparently, as of this week, according to this document that we reviewed, everybody entering the West Wing for any reason phones in a lockbox or turned all the way off. Again, that reporting is exclusive to us tonight. I can tell you that we've reviewed a document that provides that document to the Secret Service, but neither the Secret Service nor the White House is confirming the contents of this, this, this apparent new policy. But this news comes amid a new scandal concerning the president's daughter and her husband, who both serve as senior advisors in the White House. Late last month, Politico.com reported that Jared Kushner had been using a private family email domain to conduct some of his White House business. The following day, the day after that report came out, Congressman Elijah Cummings, the top Democrat on the Oversight Committee, he sent Jared Kushner a letter demanding that he preserve all government-related business he might have done on this private email account. We now know, thanks to a scoop this week from USA Today, that within 24 to 48 hours of receiving that letter, Plus, a follow-up signed by both Elijah Cummings and the Republican chair of the Oversight Committee. Between one and two days after being asked in writing by Congress to preserve those email records of that government business conducted on a private email server, within 24 to 48 hours of that demand, according to USA Today, Jared and Ivanka rerouted their private email accounts to computers run by the Trump Organization. So... As you might imagine, Congressman Cummings is, well, he has questions about that income. Uh, he churned out four letters today, uh, one for the company that hosts those servers, uh, which is uh, GoDaddy, <laughs> which is funny given the context here, GoDaddy. Uh, one for the president's real estate company, Trump Organization. Uh, Jared and Ivanka got one. They will share that copy of their letters, I, I guess. Uh, and finally, Congressman Cummings sent one of these letters this week to the FBI asking the FBI to please open up a security review of Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump's mysterious email dump onto the president's company servers after they had been told to retain those emails at the request of Congress. Joining me now is Congressman Elijah Cummings from Maryland. He's the top Democrat on the Oversight Committee. Congressman Cummings, it's nice to see you. Thank you for your time tonight. It's good to be with you, Rachel. Um, there, there's political context here which we shouldn't ignore, which is that the uh, Republican Congress and the Trump campaign um, made a huge stink last year during the presidential campaign about Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State having used a private email server. And that context here resonates in terms of the hypocrisy of potential double standard. With that, no doubt about it. Yeah, with no that, doubt about with it. With that understanding, what do you think is the appropriate level of concern to have about them using a private email server in this context? Well, we, we have a situation where uh, Rachel, first of all, they it's against the law. It's not against the law to use the uh, private server, but they have to uh, transfer information within 20 days, uh, government information, and official information to government uh, servers. Uh, obviously, they did not do that. Uh, what we're most concerned about is what you said at the beginning of this segment. Uh, we're concerned, Rachel, about national security. Uh, we don't know what's in this, these documents, but the thing that really concerns us is that, you know, within 24 to 48 hours after uh, Mr. Gowdy, the chairman, and I sent a what we call a preservation letter, which may, means don't destroy any documents, do not relocate them, because they may very well be a part of an investigation and we may need these documents. They then suddenly, uh, that is Ms. Trump and uh, her husband, Mr. Kushner, transfer them to the Trump Organization. And so we don't have a clue as to, uh, you know, what these documents say, why they did this, are they trying to avoid uh, us having an opportunity to determine whether or not they're classified or not, and uh, you know what's what what are what are they appearing to hide? And so I'm very concerned, and we all should be concerned because, uh, if you'll recall, uh, Rachel, when Hillary Clinton's uh, information was uh, divulged about her uh, using a private email and that kind of thing, uh, we spent probably millions of dollars and uh, hundreds of man hours just dealing with that. And now uh, it seems as if the Republicans are saying, 
well, uh, boys and girls will be boys and girls. And that's not good enough for the national security of the United States. And let me just zero in on something you just mentioned there about the preservation uh, request, the preservation demand that you made um, to yes. Ms. Ms. Trump and Mr. Kushner about this. It specifically said that they should not relocate these documents. It wasn't just don't destroy these emails, but don't move them. And that was an explicit That's part of the request right before they moved them? That's exactly right. Um, it was very specific. Uh, these are standard uh, letters. Uh, and, and, you know, the interesting thing, Rachel, is they never uh, even notified us that they were rerouting these uh, emails. And a lot of people will ask the question, well, uh, what about Hillary Clinton? Keep in mind, when Hillary Clinton, when all this came out about Hillary Clinton with regard to the private email server, she said, release everything. Just put it all out there and let's figure, out, figure it out from there. Uh, it seems as if... Uh, Mr. Kushner and uh, Ms. Trump have decided that they want to go send, reroute these to the Trump Organization. And by the way, keep in mind, they have been saying that they were uh, not connected with the Trump Organizations, which is controlled by Donald Trump and, and the other brother. Uh, so there's something wrong with this picture. It sounds, it smells very fishy. And so we're going to figure out exactly where the smell is coming from and how bad things are, or good. Congressman Elijah Cummings, who's the top Democrat on the House Oversight Committee. Uh, it's really nice to have you on the show tonight, sir. Thank you for being here. We it's, appreciate it. It's good to be with you. All right, thank you. We got much more to come. It's a busy night. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.